Let me know when you guys can see that. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, so uh, just <clears throat> if I may here, uh, basically I searched for uh, 89 a priori terms and phrases in the uh, 1905 uh, Syriac Peshitta. What and, do you uh, mean by a, a priori? What do you mean by that? What's... Well, based on, they're, they're predetermined, right? So, so it's basically access terms or terms that he's looking for initially. That are along the same theme. Yeah. Got it. Just things that, things that I would expect to see there. And uh, just as a review, the 1905 uh, Peshitta was written in Aramaic. It's a Semitic language that's closely related to Hebrew. In fact, uh, there are passages in Ezra, Daniel, and other later uh, books in the Old Testament that were also written in Aramaic. Uh, also with the Peshitta, the New Testament is ordered differently. It's sequenced by the four Gospels, Acts, the General Epistles, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, the Epistles of Paul, and then Revelation. And uh, I just wanted to do a quick demo here just so you could, could see what I was talking about. But when you, uh, when you select a term and you type in the search term, in that translation cell, it's freeform text. It does not affect the search. Right. But for me, it helps to put the transliteration, the uh, the Strong's reference, and then a quick memory jogger for the uh, for the meaning. I may additionally incorporate adding in the scripture where I found based on a lesson learned this this, uh, this past week. Uh, otherwise, I won't be wasting much time. But this this particular table is found in, uh, in between Luke 22 and 33 all the way to James 5 and 12. So based on the new sequencing, that's Luke, John, Acts, and James. And uh, my access term, and I'm going to switch screens on you here. All right. And let me see how I share that one. Like a so stop. I'm going to stop this one and I'm going to share this one. Oh, and Jonathan, I, I, I did this for you. Uh, I know your eyes uh, get sore with the white, so. Um, yeah, it's easier to see when it, uh, there's a contrast. It's like a washing machine in the background sometimes. It is. Hold on. I'll, cl I'll go close the door. Okay. Sorry. Cool. You're a great detective, Harry. It sounds. Sorry. <laughs> it's a work in progress, brother. <laughs> yeah. But at any rate. I'm washing the bugs right now myself. That's crazy. <laughs> you can't hear mine. <laughs> so the access term there is the day of the end, or uh, Yom Ha-Kutsa, uh, maybe. Uh, and, and basically, with the, with the uh, He, Kuf, Sade, He, the Kuf and the Sade mean uh, the end. So Yom is the day yeah. of the yeah. end. And um, basically, the information regarding the rapture, I believe, has been hidden from Abaddon, uh, the destroyer. But I, I believe the codes have been revealed so that it informs us and encourages us to endure to the end. Uh, if you recall, Yeshua stated in, in the Brit Hadashah, and uh, Mahayu, uh, 24, 13. But he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. Uh, one of the things I found intriguing, and uh, there's my speaking notes, is the skips, uh, well, the ELS of 1776, 
I, I know that date's got to ring out in a couple of folks' minds. And then the ELFs is uh, 8878, uh, negative 8879, and 8898. Those correspond to the access term uh, kidnapped and also uh, net hatef, which uh, Darla helped me spell, and obviously I got the concept from Alan uh, a long time ago. But overall, it looks like a formal agenda to me. Uh, Let me just cover, let's cover those numbers um, really quick. Sure, 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 uh, sure. Because this would be important for anybody using um, Millennial Edition on YouTube, and I'm not going to name any names, but there's some that have extreme, let me just explain this extreme number factors here which are you know way overboard into the um you know random occurrence air, uh, zone where this is just very common it's not anything impressive but what you have here i want to point this out is is all of all of your numbers are under first of all under ten thousand. so we're, we're talking about a relatively small area and then your els terms you have several that are just um in one line um Right. Negative two, nine, negative one, five, eight. All of those terms there fall in a very short place and are not spanning, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of letters or thousands and thousands of letters. Let me just say um, hundreds would be fine in this case because you're under 10,000. But if, if you're maxing out every term, it's really pulled out. And, and this is what I mean, pulled apart. And it's just scattered too much to the point where it's really not anything impressive. It's a random occurrence that's taking place. Words appear randomly 80% of the time you're going to find that. But in this case, it's very respectable margins that you have here. So I just wanted to point that out, Charles, um, for those that are watching. They don't understand the values of these numbers here that we're looking at. They have a meaning. Right. Yeah. Um, so let me, let me, uh, I'm trying to uh, hone my technique here. <laughs> if you just bear with me a moment. Uh, switching devices. I think that's the right one. Yep. So we'll go to the second page. And I'll let the computer catch up here. All right. So I can show you once we get back over in the code uh, code searcher or code finder for that uh, how we do these how I make the the uh, inverse view there. And then at the very top, you can see uh, feast of trumpets. And also, when we go back over to code finder or, or uh, yeah, code finder. I'll show you the scriptures that are associated with this. I'm not able to highlight it like right. like Canon Keys of the Bible right. or or some of the other uh, programs that are out there. So you have Feast of Trumpets, and then it it may be a little difficult to see there, but there you see Yahuwah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Yeshua right below it, intersecting with uh, Yahuwah and Yeshua. There you have tongues um and then on the left you have caught away and and rescued intersecting and then uh, uh obviously rescued is just below that and then uh just below on the right you have heavens and elohim and kidnapped and an interesting term I found was uh, chariots of fire uh, on the right-hand side there. And I, I added the terms when I was looking at uh, Nehatef uh, and thinking about, you know, Enoch and Elijah. And when I was reading those sections of scriptures, I add, decided to add some of those terms from chariots of fire, uh, Elijah, Enoch, and, and others. And uh, I, I believe that it will be as chariots of fire that come, come down and, and retrieve all of us. Uh, it's a rescue operation. 
Uh, it's a rescue operation initially for those that are sleeping and have been sleeping. Um, and as, as I'm reminded in the scripture, you know, uh, and it's at the very bottom of this, it's Acts uh, 1, uh, 10 and 11. But Yahuwah told us, or the angel said, you know, just like you saw uh, Yeshua ascend into heaven, he will come again the same way. And there will be a shout. And Jacob's ladder also came up in there. Uh, and I thought that was very interesting. And Ben Bride is right beside of it. And Yahuwah's voice. And you see Elijah, Elijah, uh, Elijah there and rescue. And then uh, over here to the left is shout to proclaim an assembly. I love that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and it'll be a rescue from the earth. Uh, on the day of the end and also those that sleep and I know Paul you had asked the difference between sleeping and sleep mm -hmm. and the only distinction I could make or came to my spirit was those ancients that have been sleeping for some time and then those that are asleep as a result of the tribulation mm. and this is one of the uh, the seasons, the moed, uh, just like the, the, the candlestick. And then you see clouds. And th this is this is the best part, Paula and Rick and Jonathan and Darla and everyone out there, is we'll be taken to an impregnable retreat. Isn't that awesome? From the contention of strife. Mm. And there you see my name. Uh, and it, it'll be in a sacred assembly. That's an awesome table. Yeah, I, I was I was completely blown away when I when I saw this. All right, I'm going to stop showing this, and I'm going to go show you some features on Code Finder that are really neat and also bear with some scripture. Yeah, Charles, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> also, also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're bringing up Code Finder here. You can see it good. And then uh, I'll move this bar over here in the top is the search list. That's where you enter the terms at. And then once you hit search up here, then your results pop in down in the lower window. So what I've kind of gotten accustomed to doing is, is shifting those windows. Uh, and then you just double click on that and the results populate. And I'll slide this window over here uh, so we can actually see the table. Uh, I tried to turn on that other Yahuwah, uh, but I couldn't get it to show. And I don't know what, what the problem was. But Jonathan, for you, up here in options and background, if you click on the cell and pick like that gray, that dark gray seems to work the best. Right. I played with a couple different configurations. And then uh, over in font, which is the next option down, uh, I went to the, the Net X Pro and just changed the font to a 12 so it's a little easier to view. Right. Okay. But at any rate, so uh, one of the scriptures I, I wanted to share, uh, and uh, let me get this other sheet here. So here in uh, Yeshua, I'm going to click on this one. If you right click, it shows you what you've entered into that, that, uh, that advanced search window. So you see Yeshua, you see the source I put, and the tickler in uh, English, and then the, uh, okay. the Hebrew, and you see it's a skip of two, and then what the R factor is. If you left click, and I double click, then you can see the scripture that's associated with that term. 
And uh, this is from Luke 24 and 36. And I don't know what version this is, but I'm sure it's not ISR. And uh, this, this scripture is really key because I think it sets the tone for the whole table. And uh, it reads, and while they were talking of these things, Jesus stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace be with you, be not afraid. And I know the context of that was when he appeared in the room yeah. in, uh, in Jerusalem before, uh, before going on. And what were they doing? After he they, were, they were hiding. What's, what were they doing? They were. They were hiding. Yeah. yeah. That's great. It's cool. And then uh, this next term I want to show you. Oh, oh, I missed the one. I missed the one. Hold on. Uh, here, uh, when I clicked on Yahua, but they were urgent with a loud voice and demanded of him that they might crucify him. Hmm. Uh, that was from Luke uh, 23 and 23. Uh, and then over here with tongues, and you have to close the window and uh, double click again. Actually, that is not it. I wanted this one. Uh, verily, verily, this is John 3, verse 11. Verily, verily, I say to thee, we speak what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but ye receive not our testimony. And I, I think that is so apparent today in, uh, in society. Yeah. Uh, over here with caught away. Uh, and this is when Jesus encountered the Samaritan woman, excuse me, Yeshua. And John 4, 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, how dost thou, a Jew, ask drink me? Who am a Samaritan woman? For the Jews have no familiar familiarity with the uh, with the Sumerians. Yeah. And it was funny that uh, the later portion of that conversation was, you know, you guys say you're supposed to worship at uh, Mount Moriah, and we say we're supposed to worship here. And he reminds her that there will be a day when we won't worship in a temple, but we'll worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. That's right. And then, uh, let me see here. Get a little mixed up. I think it's this one. And they said to the woman, henceforth, we believe in him, not on account of thy word, for we have heard him ourselves, and we know that he is truly the Messiah, the life giver of the world. Yeah, they were witness. They were witness and, and saw for themselves. Um, there was a, over 500, by the way, that, that witnessed Yeshua after the resurrection. Right. And then here in John 6, uh, 38, For I came down from heaven not to do my own pleasure, but the pleasure of him who sent me. And uh, th that just reminds me right now. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, wait on that because I'd have to get out of this menu here. I'm going to show you a couple more scriptures. Uh, John 7, uh, 35, the Jews said among themselves, whither is he about to go that we cannot find him? Will he go to some region of the Gentiles and teach the profane? Right. And that is exactly who they expected him to go because he said, I came not only for the lost tribes of Israel, which were in the nations. They were part of the nations. And so um, they, they're like, was he, was he going to go to talk to the Greeks now? Uh, well, I have, I have more to share on that, and it's mind-blowing. Yeah. Um, and it is right in line with the things that you and Darla and others have been saying. I think my, i got to move this. I like that you can see what, what uh, chapter and verses these are by by clicking on it. I don't think you could do that with keys to the Bible. Maybe you can, but I wasn't able to find a way to do that. But that is, that is really important that you see where, where the scriptures are and how these words, um, you know, seem to play a role in some divine way, uh, right. That they, they come together. This is, this is a, a good one too. Fear not daughter of Zion. Behold, thy King cometh to thee. And he rideth upon a colt, 
the fall of an ass. How about that? So he's he's citing uh, a prophecy that Hosanna, Hosanna, the the Messiah will come uh, riding in the east eastern gate on a donkey, and they be laying palms down. And that's exactly what happened with Yeshua. He fulfills right. all these prophecies. And here, uh, John twelve uh, sixteen. The things under, uh, these things understood not his disciples at that time. But when Jesus or Yeshua was glorified, then his disciples remembered that these things were written of him, and they did them to him. And right. The, exactly what I just said, that the prophets declared it. These Jews knew these, these scriptures, right? What scriptures? They didn't have the New Testament at the time. They had the Torah and the Tanakh, and they knew what the prophets had said. And, and they were recognizing this. And that's, I think it's incredible. We as believers, in hindsight, have the same experiences. It's only in hindsight that we put these pieces together and go, wow, man. And here in John 13, 32, and if God is glorified in him, God will glorify him in himself and will glorify him speedily. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I hope you guys aren't getting bored. No, 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 it's great stuff. I like seeing this uh, what we can in, in the Peshitta here. In John 14 and 26, but the Comforter, the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and will remind you of all that I say to you. Hallelujah. And that's true. I can bear witness. And then over here in sleeping, which is right here. <clears throat> Behold, the, this is John 16, 32. Behold, the hour cometh and hath now come when ye will be dispensed, each to his place, and ye will leave me alone. But I am not alone, for the Father is with me. Wow. And then uh, let me scroll down here a little bit. This is a new experience for me uh, as far as looking at the New Testament in the Hebrew. Now, we, we see people on YouTube doing it in the English, which I do not recommend, guys, because th those translations have been messed with so much. But the Peshitta uh, has, has stayed intact, a Semitic language, as you see, rendering codes. All right. Relevant code, actually. It's not a bunch of gibberish. And uh, this is out of Acts 2.38. Simon said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the, uh, uh, I guess it would be Yeshua, for the remission of sins, so that ye may receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. Um, yeah, I mean, when I really started getting into the scriptures, it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, Acts 1... And six, this one you'll like. And they, when assembled, asked him and said to him, Our Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Yeah, they were we looking for it. We obviously know it wasn't. But yeah. it's because the grafting in had to happen. Paul acknowledges this later in, uh, in, in his writing of Romans 11, I believe it is, um, that nobody understood this mystery. That's the mystery is this this time that you, that had to take place where where all the nations were were reached and acts 3 uh, 19 repent therefore and be converted that so your sins may be blotted out sure. and uh under rescue down here let me see here and girls yeah do you know what repent means? Uh, it's an action word, which not only means acknowledge, but turn from, not to return. Uh, I think it actually actually mean yeah that also, but it, it does mean like um, to ch change your mind. That's right. Basically, renewing renew, re renewing your mind. Roger. And here's one, and those our fathers envied Joseph and sold him into Egypt, but God 
Yahuwah, Elohim, was with him. That's right. Could I just say something here? For, yes. for the people who are on, on YouTube, this is a new experience for a lot of different reasons. Right. Number one, you're looking in Hebrew at the, um, New, at Testament. the New Testament. And, you know, everybody will tell you, oh, it's, it's always been in Greek and it's always been this and, it, and, and it's always been that. It's, it's been in something called the Peshitta. And you're seeing it here rendered with Bible codes embedded on a very specific topic. That's number two. It's a very targeted topic. We're talking about the day, the, the day of the end. All these verses that he's seemingly picking out of the air, but they're very, they're very, you know, um, deliberate by sure. our Father. He's, he, uh, you're seeing this for the first time, and not only that, but you're 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 you're, you're listening to a guy named Charles who's been trained by Jonathan. He's not some guy that's just picking things out and forcing things. This is very deliberate, and I just want to, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge that. You know, I don't know what the Hebrew word is for acknowledge, but that's what I wanted to do. Now, let me just uh, clarify that, um, that Charles is very capable of, of searching codes, but what we uh, enabled him to, to provide was the Hebrew aspect of it um, and then the training on these other um, – he – comes from an encryption background and understands the the depth of these codes uh you know i don't want to take that away from you. it's very yeah, good i don't want to do that either i'm sorry if i if i at all um, no i just wanted to clarify i know, I know yeah. you didn't uh, you probably didn't weren't aware of that yeah I, I i was but i forgot i was but i forgot but the idea of that he's a pro at this decryption or encryption stuff just is you know another phenomenal aspect of what you're witnessing here so yeah. can you can you explain then um, what was the language, Jonathan, that you said? Can you explain how this Hebrew is there in the Peshitta? Like right, it was, it's a it's a form of Aramaic, and Aramaic. okay, and, yeah, and, and it was, um, you know, what was used in the time of Yeshua? Let, let, let's let's be really clear, guys. And I've heard PhDs say this, and it's very <laughs> disheartening that that Yeshua spoke Greek. And that when he when he read out of the Torah in the synagogue that he was reading a Greek manuscript, the Septuagint, which is there's no proof of that. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that Yeshua was Jewish and he kept the traditions of the Jews. And I can very safely say they would have rejected the Hellen Helleniz Hellenization. Let's just say that the Hasmonean dynasty that was in rule at the time. Amen. Yeshua was against it, and you know, um, so he spoke, he spoke Hebrew. Um, he read the Hebrew scriptures and, uh, you know, those disciples that he had spoke this language. Um, there's evidence that Matthew recorded this in his language. It was not exclusively in Greek guys. That was something translators gave us through the quote church. Um, the early fathers, if you will. Um, Jonathan, five yes. scriptures. And I'm going to show you that he celebrated Hanukkah as part of it. Yeah. yeah. He I mean, served it, it, the, the, uh, the holidays and traditions. Certainly. Yeah. yeah, and that's what we're trying to get people to see. In Acts 7 here, uh, uh, 39, And our fathers would not hearken to him, but forsook him, and in their hearts Returned again to Egypt. Wow, we were just talking about this this purging right of Egypt coming out of Egypt and then Egypt coming out of us. But what happens here in Acts? They spiritually went back to Egypt. Right, uh, that's incredible. Because they wouldn't listen to him. Right, they wouldn't hearken. Mm -hmm. No, that was the one I just clicked. Okay, four more uh, over here by. This one, I believe. Acts ten thirty nine, and we are his witnesses, 
as to whatever he did in all the regions of Judea and in Jerusalem. This same person the Jews hung on a tree and slew him. Hallelujah. That's, that's a great verse because it's establishing the witnesses of Judea. And you can even find this in the Talmud, guys, evidence of, of Yeshua's crucifixion. If you go to the Talmud 39D, in the, in the, the things that happened to the temple on that very day, it's the day Yeshua was, was crucified. No one in Judaism puts the connection together. The evidence is there. And it's just stated in, in, uh, in Acts. There were witnesses and people saw these things happen. Amen. Uh, Acts 13, 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they rejoiced and glorified Yahuwah. And those believed who were appointed to eternal life. And then Hallelujah. Those who were appointed to eternal life believed. Amen. Acts 26 and 9. For I myself at first resolved in my own mind that I would perpetuate many ad adverse things against the name of Jesus the Nazarene. Mm. And the final one for hope for all of us here, then I'm going to go over to Baba Hub real quick because it, it's difficult for me to find the scriptures in the actual text. Uh, but James 5 and 11, for lo, we ascribe blessedness to them who have borne suffering, yet have heard of, of the patience of Job. And ye have seen the result which the Lord wrought for him. For the Lord is merciful and compassionate. And I think all of us uh, end time believers uh, probably need to hold on to that experience uh, because I think it's going to be very similar. Yeah. And let me let me go over to Bible Hub. And you, when you, you know, that, that, that needs to be uh, pointed out, for, especially for those in the, quote, church that have this in escape mentality that, oh, we are a blessed people. Nothing's going to happen to me. We're out of here, right? When you have Job, who in his hour of distress, his hour of of testing, he lost everything. Even unto death, he was brought to the, to the brink of death. Where was his Elohim? He was, he was right there with him the whole time. Never left him. Hey, Jonathan, just to reiterate, uh, I know I'm in John 7 here. Mm -hmm. But uh, so tongues, which is uh, the last term, runs from John uh, 7, 1, and all the way to Luke 22. And I'm just going to spend a couple spots within John uh, 7, uh, John 10, and John 11. And uh, it's really going to bring the conversation back around to what you were discussing earlier uh, after uh, Heralder had, uh, had chatted there. And here you see in John 7 that Yeshua was in Galilee and he did not wish to walk in Yehuda because the Yehudim were seeking to kill him. Right. And it was during the festival of booze. And then if if we go down to John seven fourteen Which was and tabernacles, guys, this is this is the this is the point in time that's going on. And he did not go to Jerusalem specifically because they wanted to kill him. Right. And he says well, a little uh, bit later, uh, and I think verse 6, he says, my time is not yet. This is why, because he was on right. a time schedule. Well, even, the, uh, even his disciples were, uh, were giving him a hard time about it. They're like, if you're a God, you can go anywhere and do anything you want. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, no, my time is not now. You, you know, you can go and do what you need to do because your time is now, but mine is not. Yeah. And so they went down to Jerusalem. And then uh, a little bit later, Yeshua snuck down to Jerusalem. And I, and I find this scripture so enlightening here. And uh, even in my own life. And it's John 17 and 14. And it says, and about the middle of the festival, uh, Yeshua went up into the set apart place. Obviously, that's uh, there on Mount Moriah in the temple. And he was teaching. And the Hudim <clears throat> were marveling, saying, how does this man know letters? not having learned yeah 
And Yeshua answered them and said, my teaching is not mine, but he who sent me. God will, excuse me, Yahuwah will teach you everything you need to know. That's right. You know, we all go about life and we think we have to do things on ourselves, you know. God gave me brain, you know, and I got to, you know, do this. But no, he wants us to wait on him. He wants us to be patient. He wants us to trust him. Many, he is more able. You are right, brother. Many believe that, um, that he's actually mentioning the, the Tetragrammaton uh, as far as the letter. It's because it was, it was common for, for Hebrew or Jewish boys, men from the age of 12 and up, to know Torah. They would read uh, the, these, these scripts and, and learn Torah and uh, what the prophet prophet said this is how the disciples knew that prophecies were being fulfilled it's it's mentioned in their scriptures there but they they specifically say how does he know the letters right Yeshua said i came teaching your name father so he's teaching them the name he was restoring that. charles that's incredible yeah charles i just wanted to tell you how beautiful this table is and thank you so much for um, baruching us uh, with the scriptures uh, that you found with this table. It is absolutely inspiring. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Yes. All praise to you. Oh, yes. Very good. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. So we got, we got two more here. Uh, John 10, 22. At that time, the Hanukkah came to be in Jerusalem. And it was winter. He celebrated. That's right. Amen. That's right. Which is, um, it's called a dedication. And if you know the story of Maccabees, it is quite similar to what we're going to see in, in the end times as far as uh, the, the battles that ensued over uh, the sons of light and sons of darkness. And taking a stand for what you believe is what the Maccabees did. And, um, and because you, you know, um, there was this Greek ruler who come through there and sacrificed a pig, set up a statue of Zeus and defiled the temple. And, um, there was these sect of Jew Jews that, that, you know, didn't think that was right. And they stood in the, in the adversity and face of death and, uh, took up a sword and took back the temple. And then he ended up cleansing the temple. This is before Yeshua's time. Um, and this is why they, they observed um, what is called Hanukkah, the dedication, the dedication, the rededication of, of the temple. Many people don't understand what, what really took place. They, they hear the story of the, the menorah and the candle, uh, the, the oil running out, right? And it missed the overall big picture of what is really going on there. This is a picture of the Antichrist, right? This, this ruler that comes in and, uh, and these believers who take back the city. And, and so this next scripture, just to set the context, uh, Yeshua learns that uh, Eleazar uh, has, has died. And so he's coming back to Martha, Miriam, uh, and actually raises Eleazar. But uh, here in... in uh, 24, uh, Yeshua is asking Martha, do you believe that he'll be resurrected? And she says to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Exactly what this table is about. Right. right. And then in 20 Now, what resurrection was he, was, uh, was he, was he talking about? Uh, was he talking about his resurrection or the the the, the second coming of Yeshua? Because see, um, I don't believe that Lazarus was required to die twice, right? Um, Jesus, he go ahead. Yeshua said in twenty three. Yeshua said to her, "Your brother shall rise again." And in twenty four, Martha said to him, "I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day." And in twenty five, Yeshua said to her. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. 
Hallelujah. And let's roll down to, to 40. Jonathan, I don't know what the right answer is to that question, but that is, uh, that is a good point. She didn't understand. Uh, she didn't understand that he was he was going to raise up, and uh, and some believe that he died again, and and uh, was going to have to go through another resurrection. I think he went on on to on to heaven. But there's no scripture to back that up. It's just right. common sense. Right. Here in forty, it says uh, Yeshua said to her, "Do I not say that? Do I not say to you that if you believe?" you shall see the esteem of Elohim. And then down in, in uh, I think this prayer is very important in 41. So they took away the stone where the dead man was laid and Yeshua lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing by, I said this in order that they believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Eleazar, come out. Yeah. And he who died came out, uh, bound feet and hands with wrappings, and his face was wrapped with the cloth. And Yeshua said to him, to them, loosen and let him go. He was. And then, uh, yeah. This, this one's for Darla. But he did not say this from himself. But being high priest that year, he uh, prophesied that Yeshua was about to die for the nation. Yeah, he's talking and about Caiaphas, he, right? He's, uh, no, he prophesied that Yeshua. Caiaphas. Yeah, that's Caiaphas that yeah, he, prophesied. Yes, yes was about to die for the nation. And then it said in 52, and not for the nation only, but to gather together into one, the children of El Elohim who were scattered abroad. That's incredible. Uh, that, that's right there in John. Uh, John 11, folks on, for, on YouTube, don't understand that Yeshua actually came to reconcile those, those nations back. Who are those nations? That is you. That is who... You became, right, uh, or, or they became us. Assimilated into. Right. So that's what it's talking about. Um, these nations that were scattered abroad. Uh, it's, right, been, it's been in John the whole time, and uh, because of some erroneous teachings, many have missed it, what, what's really going on. That's so amazing, Charles, that you have found that and brought it to the light. How many times have we read this book and didn't see that? Amen. I didn't find it. You should do a show too. It's so wonderful to have <laughs> you searching the Aramaic Peshitta and to, to bring these things forth to the Christian community who need to see these things. It's just, it's obviously an anointing, and it's because your heart is right with Yahuwah to bring forth and restore the truth to his people. So yeah. thank you for, for your service. Yeah. I agree. Well, final verse, right? So Yeshua, this is Passover time. So we'll go to 54, and it says, Yeshua therefore no longer went openly among the Hudim, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim and remained there with his taught ones. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. That he goes to, he actually goes to Ephraim after this, which is, that's us. This is who, who represents us in that time, uh, who we, we, we came from. Um, What's interesting is that he hides in Ephraim. Yeah. Like we're hiding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we've been hidden. Right. Until... Until his, until his time. Um, right, and, uh, yeah, until there's a time. And uh, that's also something I see as a pattern is, is Yeshua is on this time schedule. And, like, he, you know, they're expecting him to show up for, the, for at this time is Passover um, because he had he'd, you know, skipped out on, on others that it seemed quite 
strange to them, I'm sure, that, you know, he didn't make the journey to into Jerusalem and participate in what is required, um, these, these feasts. And that was because uh, his time was not yet. It's incredible. Well, Jonathan, well, I, that was all I had. Great job. Say again? Uh, that, that's I appreciate this so much. Um, uh, it's incredible. I think uh, we, we should you, really be getting into the Peshitta at some point in this course because um, it's really – I haven't seen a lot of people do it. Sean Mitchell I know has been in it for a while, but I haven't seen anybody else touch it uh, in, until, Charles, you came in and uh, – likeness of what – yeah. So that's why Rick said it's very unique for us. Uh, because we've spent a lot of time in the Tanakh and uh, know that very well. No time in uh, in the New Testament. So, um, I think Jonathan want to download Code Finder. It does, and uh, I will be doing that again. I used to have it um, twice. I've had it before, and uh, both of those computers were destroyed in different hackings. Um, but I was an, I was a proficient as as Charles with it. Um, I, I still favor Taurus soft over it. Um, but I think there's a lot of important information in that in the New Testament. It needs to be you know, revealed. I, I'm firm believer that the, these codes have got to be a tool. Um, first for warning. The other uh, would be reconciling what we're reading. Um, there's there's got to be a way to, to know what the Father means and not what all the commentaries um, mean. There's so many opinions and interpretations that uh, you can get lost in it. So uh, that's where I stand on it. It's absolutely not a tool to predict the future. However, the future is contained in it. Um, Amen. Great job. Someone have a question for me? Say that again. You broke up a little bit. Uh, so, who, me? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody, somebody asked me a question. I wasn't certain. Oh, I was going to mention, Charles, uh, I saw when you first put this up, you were looking at your list of words, you were sharing your list of words, and I noticed um, your spelling of not Saul. Can you bring that up real quick? I thought it was pretty interesting. What you shared on not Saul compared to not Sar, which is us, the remnant, those that watch. The branch. Yeah. And that's her. Oh, oh, there we go. Share screen. It's not popping up. <laughs> well, do you see it there? You can. Oh, there we go. There we go. I got so not Saul's about a little over just beyond halfway down. Not Saul is rescue, extricate, deliver. That's one letter difference from not Sar. How about that? Wow. Wow. So those, so, those two have two letters in common. Yeah. Wow. You guys see the the the, the relevancy. Here. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. Wow. She has an eye for that kind of stuff. <laughs>